Hey there, Death Squad. We're now here. Now let's continue where we left off. And let's keep on cleaning around here. One of the reasons why I'm cleaning that up and not leaving the grunge like that, it's because I want this asset to have to be to be a little bit more uh, appealing to whoever is viewing it on the game. And if we just have a random map over there, the random map can only go so far with the parameters that it's given from its own logarithm and the big maps. But we need to always give the assets our own personal touch. So every time I use procedural maps a lot when I'm here in Substance Painter, but I always like to add my own personal touch to them. So I never just throw in a, a procedural and, and let it be. I always try to add my own little touches here and there. And there is a, a huge variation in the coloring here. So what we can do is we can play with the opacity and I'm going to reduce the opacity around 60% and let's play with this color. So we can make it darker, we can make it lighter. So if a dark color will be wearing out, it will be lighter. So let's just go the other way and let's make it not as saturated. Another thing that you can do is we can add a height channel to this and we can maybe create a little bit of texturing. So even though I don't have a high poly for this object, you can see that by just adjusting the height here with the mask that we applied and the grunge, we're going to be adding a little bit of normal map detail and this is without a high poly. So this is what's very cool about this program. Now we're adding normal map detail to our lamp without even having to spend a lot of time modeling a high poly. Okay, those are just small touches and this may be a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is to go and type my own value which would be minus 0 0.04. And it's just a subtle detail. I don't want it to be extremely harsh. So it's not jarring to the eye. Unless you really want to have like a post-apocalyptic lamp that's been damaged a lot by the weather, the elements. Maybe there was a nuclear bomb. Let's do 0 0.05. There you go. All right. Now, our lamp is looking a little bit dull because everything is completely rough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the roughness and we're going to make it a little bit smoother here. And this is going to allow this parts to show through. So whatever I painted over here on this one, let's give this name, let's do where. So whatever is worn out, you can see that it's not going to be reflecting. So we have all these like nicks and kind of like punches over here, which look very nice. Now over here, it's probably too exaggerated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my paint layer and I'm going to paint that out because I think this is too much for this piece is right here. And feel free to customize your asset to your desires or to your needs. Okay, I'm just gonna go here. So it's not super damaged a 
okay and if you want you can even add a second uh, layer type so let me duplicate the base color again you can create your new layer if you want to it's just duplicating the base color it's easier I'm gonna name this metalware we're gonna be using the metalness part of this now you're gonna see the metalness have a value from 0 to 1 however metalness was created to be a boolean value not a flow value so an item is either dielectric or metallic that's the opposite of metallic in the PBR workflow dielectric so you either have zero metallic which means the object is dielectric or you have 100% metallic which means the object is completely metallic having values in between will make your engine not react to the map as um, as it's supposed to be in real life so if you want to make a more high quality asset I suggest it's taken between the two it's either metallic or not metallic so we're going to make this layer metallic we're going to change the color to something a lot lighter and we're going to play with the roughness and we're going to add a black mask now instead of adding a procedural here because I want these metallic worn parts in very specific places I'm just going to paint them myself I'm just going to grow my brush and kind of like paint them over here kind of like where people put their hands a lot and the paint is, is peeling so right now I'm using a very big brush and I'm going to switch back to a smaller brush later on so let's say this is where people kind of like post their signs uh, put their hands on uh, maybe bang on it a little bit sometimes people will do that to lamp posts and we'll just kind of switch around and we're going to take away from that mask a little bit so it's not as uniform and again this particular um, step it's not dependent on pen pressure so you can do the same thing that I'm doing with the mouse okay let's adjust the roughness maybe make it over here just so it's a little bit more notable okay just a little bit around certain places maybe there's been a lot of snow that's chipped away some and if you maybe want to have, have kind of like a rusted look let's just change this into the reds pull this towards this side this will give it more kind of like a rust rusted look like you know it's not made of a metal that's supposed to take elements And again, if you want, you can add a procedural map to this part of the tutorial. Uh, I just want the this rust spots to be in a very specific position. Kind of like around these places. This is where definitely rust would accumulate. that red is way too strong let me just reduce the saturation a bit there you go and let's pull it this way yeah texturing is all about looking 
add what's going on and just add him some changes. It, there are no set rules here is what looks good. I would suggest using reference for this part as well. And one of the things I think I, I want to add a little bit of color variation to our model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to go back to polygon fill. Now we are already in polygon mode. So I'm going to just drag a rectangle over the TP tops. The reason for that is because I want to make these another kind of uh, metal. So because I, I don't want our lamp to be just one single color. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add another fill layer on top. And we're going to call it top C's. All right, this is the top part. And I'm actually going to take away all of these. I'm going to add a black mask. Because we're already in projections, going to default to that. I'm just going to go back to our brushes. And I'm going to turn this into kind of like a yellow color, maybe more golden. A little bit more saturated. And let's make it metal. Yeah, let's make it metal. So we are going to do our mask. We're going to go back to polygon fill. We're just going to fill those polygons. And we have our tops are going to look a little bit different. So one thing that I would recommend is when you're painting, you're painting at this distance, but your assets is probably not going to be looked at so close. So always have a complete view of your asset. Always pull back and look at your whole asset. And now that I'm looking at it, I see that it looks like it just have splotches over here. So I'm going to go with my black uh, brush and I'm kind of like helping out those parts of my model not look like somebody's splotch or just a, like a bucket of rust on top of this lamp. So it's supposed to be smaller spots. I'm just checking out all parts of my lamp make sure that everything looks okay that we have everything over here let me look at the roughness of this and let's add some roughness to it and let's make it uh because we now we never should make this as mirror like let's pull it back this way okay that way it's it's not the reflection on top it's not as strong because it's just a subtle detail to change the way our lamp is looking and I'm, now that I'm seeing I'm going to actually desaturate this color a little bit more so I'll go this way so it doesn't contrast a lot with what's going on it's just subtle details This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.